Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and you know what, I think it's a very safe thing to say that nobody likes being lied to, especially to our face and especially not from our video games and especially, especially not from our video games when it's done on the game's cover art itself. What am I talking about? Well, just watch the video and find out as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 insane lies told on video game box art. Number 10. This actually isn't what Booker looks like. Bioshock Infinite. So the front cover for Bioshock Infinite may look pretty neat on its own merits, focusing on a seemingly badass, chisel-jawed, gun-toting protagonist known as Booker DeWitt. However, once you play the game and get to see what Booker really looks like, it's clear something far more cynical was at play behind the scenes. In the game itself, Booker looks considerably more, well, normal, a pretty typical-looking man rather than the comparatively heightened hunk of testosterone that he appears to be on the front cover. Though the cover doesn't fundamentally misrepresent the actual gameplay, it nevertheless feels like 2K wanted to appeal to edgy teens by making Booker look tough and stylized, while actually blatantly misrepresenting his actual design. Now, while it's not uncommon in decades past for cover art to be commissioned and completed before a game even goes into full production, that excuse doesn't exactly hold much water today. Number 9. Solid Snake is not the protagonist Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty As most fans reasonably expected, the front cover of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty features a brilliantly gorgeous drawing of franchise protagonist Solid Snake. Meanwhile, the back cover proudly promised Solid Snake is back, and implied that most if not all of the game would see Snake attempting to infiltrate an oil tanker in order to prevent a weapon of mass destruction from falling into the wrong hands. But as incredible as the front design is, the box art is completely misleading, given that only the first hour or so of the game features a playable snake, after which players were suddenly thrust into the shoes of the real protagonist, Raiden, who isn't featured anywhere on the box. Fans remain intensely divided over the Raiden twist and how aggressively Hideo Kojima wrestled Snake away from them, but if nothing else, Kojima committed fully to the lie from top to bottom, even asking reviewers not to give the big twist away. Thankfully though, Metal Gear Solid 2 is an incredible game through and through, so it's tough not to feel too mad about the Exception, though Snake surely was missed. Number 8. The Ultimate Bi-Level Battlefield – Mortal Kombat 3 The home console releases of Mortal Kombat 3 were largely well received, though some players nevertheless took umbrage with the fact that a promised feature didn't actually make the cut. The game's back cover lists among its features the Ultimate Bi-Level Battlefield, stating that players can smash up and down into different backgrounds during combat. Though the final release does allow players to uppercut opponents into higher levels, there's no ability to move back down to lower levels or have any additional control over where the fights take place. If you reach the top, well, sorry, you're stuck there for the remainder of the battle. I know it's not the end of the world, certainly compared to some of the other entries on this list, but it's still staggering that the third entry into one of the most iconic video game IPs ever made left such a brazen lie on its cover. Number 7. Using screenshots from the console version WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2007 for the PSP Bull shots are nothing new in video games. Developers have been upselling their games for literally decades with misleading images which inaccurately present a game's graphical prowess. But THQ got particularly cheeky when it came to the PSP release of wrestling game WWE SmackDown vs Raw 2007, which included two gameplay screenshots featuring Batista, Booker T, The Undertaker, and John Cena. Except to anyone with a pair of functioning eyeballs, it's clear that this level of visual fidelity simply wasn't even possible on the handheld hardware. Basically, what THQ had done was take screen grabs from the PS2 and or Xbox 360 versions of the game and then just use them here, assuming that people were far too gullible to tell the difference. The controversy over the deception was ultimately pretty muted, but it's all the more bizarre considering that the PSP version of the game was really well received by critics and didn't need to rely on such crass parlor tricks. Number 6. It's not a full remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake the biggest cover art controversy of recent times undeniably belongs to Final Fantasy VII's remake, which was criticized by numerous prominent gaming outlets for not clarifying that it was only the first part of a long-form remake project. To look at the rather minimalist box art for the widely acclaimed RPG, you'd be forgiven for assuming that it was a full retail remake of the entire Final Fantasy VII, rather than an expanded reimagining of the first, I don't know, 30% or so of the game? For people who don't follow gaming news and might have just stumbled across the game's 
box, they'd be well within their rights to feel pretty miffed when they find out that they've shelled out full retail price for only one third of the game that they thought they were getting. Now, don't get me wrong, it's great, it's a content-filled one third for sure, but all Square Enix had to do was simply write part one underneath the word remake. The back cover does actually mention that it's one part in a larger remake series, but it's printed in small, easily missed text. As such, many believe that Square Enix knew exactly what they were doing and didn't want to risk putting casual players off. And at present, it's still unclear exactly how many games the remake project will become, but it's certainly got to be at least three. Number five, it doesn't actually feature a man playing a banjo, Phalanx. Right, so box art doesn't get much more ridiculous than that of 1991's space shooter Phalanx, where an old man playing a banjo takes up a solid half of the front cover's real estate, despite having absolutely nothing to do with the game itself. The actual spaceship takes up a small fraction of the cover, and the tagline, the hyperspeed shootout in space, is also tiny compared to the giant unidentified man with a bloody banjo. But don't worry, because in 2017, an interview with Destructoid with those who worked on the cover explained why they chose to do this this, and simply put, it was a way to differentiate themselves from others in the market. Now, it was easy to appreciate the swinging for the fences ambition of it all, but ultimately, the strategy failed as Phalanx quickly came and went without much of a peep. Number 4. This, thankfully, isn't what Mega Man looks like. Mega Man. In any discussion about the worst video game cover arts of all time, the North American release of the original Mega Man inevitably comes up. Though the gorgeous Japanese art reflected the title hero perfectly, the American cover was drawn in just six hours at the very last minute without a visual reference, and oh boy, does it ever bloody show. Above all else, it doesn't even begin to represent Mega Man correctly. Here he's an adult man rather than a boy, his costume is yellow-blue rather than his signature all-blue, and he's holding a pistol rather than having a cannon fused to his arm. Is he going to shoot us? Is he holding us up? And you know what? It was so bad that Keiji Inafune even blamed the terrible cover art on the game's shambolic commercial performance in the US. But if you did want to see this character in action, then you could play Street Fighter X Tekken, or Cross Tekken, depending on how you want to pronounce it, where he was indeed a secret character for the PS3. Great? <laughs> I guess that's great. Number 3. All the Missing Features – World Series Baseball 2K1 so back when Sega was trying to bolster their Dreamcast platform as a high-tech home for premium sports video games, particularly following the success of their universally beloved NFL 2K, they talked up their upcoming baseball game, World Series Baseball 2K1, to the nth degree. Sega suggested that the game would do for baseball what NFL 2K did for American football, delivering a comprehensive and visually stunning representation of the beloved sport. But you know what? It didn't do that at all, because it couldn't even deliver on the basics promised by its cover art. The game's bad cover promised the implementation of hot and cold zones to illustrate where players would be most likely to hit the ball, dynamic weather systems, and four modes of play, none of which turned out to be true. Beyond veering away from the promised Sim-style gameplay, the absence of the much-loved Home Run Derby mode, first shown off at the previous E3 and implied to be one of the four aforementioned modes of play mentioned on the back cover, left many fans understandably feeling rather duped. Number 2. Better with Kinect Mass Effect 3 Though Mass Effect 3's colossally disappointing ending ensured that fans couldn't talk about anything else for a few months, there was another, albeit far less egregious, controversy unfolding in plain sight. You see, the game's Xbox 360 cover art came with a boastful banner that said, Better with Kinect, referring to the console's divisive motion-sensing peripheral. This allowed players to call out commands verbally during combat rather than carrying them out with the controller. Now, this was a rather novel idea, and you know what? It wasn't implemented uh, terribly, but ultimately it never rose above being a transparent desperate attempt to try and shift some bloody connects. For anyone taking Mass Effect 3 seriously, talking to your console to issue basic squad commands would have not improved the experience in any tangible way. Better with Connect? What a bloody lie. And number one, only on PlayStation, Yakuza 0. Now, a select number of PS4 games were released with the only on PlayStation label on the front cover, obviously implying that these games were permanently exclusive to the PS4 and would not ever be found on any other platforms. Though the majority of only on PlayStation games have stayed that way, a number of them have actually been ported to PC, and in the case of Yakuza 0, it's now available on both PC and Xbox One. While additional availability is certainly a good thing for gamers in general, the banner boast does seem rather silly because true console exclusivity is such a rare these days. Furthermore, the physical release of Yakuza 0 still contains the exclusivity banner as Sega hasn't bothered to produce a new manufacturing run with the now incorrect claim removed. Now again, there are far worse distortions of the truth on this list, but it does mean that the front cover looks a bit daft to anyone who counts it among their collection. 
And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 insane lies told to you on video game box arts. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it would be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, and that is not going to be a lie, and that is that you are an utter ledge, my friend. You deserve love, happiness, and success, all of the best things in life. Why? Because you are a good person, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? I want you to go out there and absolutely smash your life goals today. Go on, I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.